Ladies and gents, I don't know if you can see my glass, it says Pint of Science on it. So, Pint of Science, cheers everyone, thank you glasses. Cheers. Okay, we will get going then. Um, so for the next 25 minutes-ish, we're going to talk about this thing called the Burger Apocalypse. Or ways to reduce your food carbon footprint. Um, Alright. I'm allowed to say, and it's, it's my great pleasure to be able to say, that I get to give out some prizes to you guys. Ooh. What have I got for you? I've got, potentially, depending on how well you do, three different things for you tonight. Firstly, a pint of science t-shirt. A pint of science glass. And even, re relevant to the topic, um, the fantastic How Bad Are Bananas book, The Carbon Footprint of Everything. Yeah, I was also going to give out some um, beer mats, but now I can see that you've actually already got them all over your table. <laughs> but I'll give you another one anyway, if you're good. There you go. Okay, on with the show. What we're going to cover in the next 20 minutes or so is, firstly, what is the burger apocalypse? Okay, I've said it's about in the environmental impact of our food um, and our food choices, so we'll delve into that a little bit more. Mainly we will do it through um, my ABC of low carbon eating, okay, which is, which is, which is, damn it. That's my ABC, okay? So it's avoid wasting food, buy in season food, and choose low carbon food more. We're gonna take you through the A, B, and C, um, and for each of them, there's a little activity that you can get involved in to win one of the three prizes. So we'll see how we go on with that. I don't know why my clicker is not clicking. This might be bald head in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so firstly, why, do, why should we focus on food? Here's a good reason why. It can save you the most money. If you're hunting around, as most of you are, as you're here at this Pint of Science themed event tonight, for ways to reduce your carbon footprint, doing it in the area of your food is the way that can save you the most money. More than if you reduce your carbon footprint with your transport or in the home, okay? This can save you, this is an American study, but it can save you four to 500 pounds a year because the high carbon foods are really expensive, okay? So that's a really good way to do it. And the, the other thing, um, thinking slightly longer term, is we're going to move to a low carbon renewable system over time anyway. So in the next two or three decades, what you'll see is the transport system, um, our energy, electricity, energy use in the home, etc. That's all going to become low carbon anyway. But with food, it's hard to replicate that in the food production system. So it's our own personal choices of what foods we choose to eat and not waste, hopefully, that can really have a big impact in reducing our food carbon footprint. Okay. Oh, it's working again. Look, it's a picture of a burger. That's why it's called the Burger Apocalypse. I was hoping more of you would have had burgers during the break so I could have a go at you. <laughs> Yesterday there was burgers everywhere and now I, I don't know if it's just random chance or the fact that you knew the burger apocalypse was about to happen but I couldn't see many burgers so well done. Um, if you had have had burgers this is what I may possibly have said is um, how did we do on um, my low to high carbon footprint score for your burger? So you can see here, if it was a beef or lamb burger, you score lots of carbon points. If it had lots of cheese on it or bacon on it, you score a couple more points. If it was only a chicken burger, less. Veggie burger, less again. So that's about emissions of the food itself. Then we talk about the, the vegetables on top and whether they're in season or not. You can see at the moment, lettuce is now in season. Mushrooms have just come into season. Tomato onions, possibly not quite yet in the UK. And so if you eat them quite a lot, this carbon footprint will be higher. And then finally, just to um, use this as the example, if you'd have had fries on the side, did they have the skin on still? Or if you have potatoes at home, do you keep the skin on? If not, you take the skin off, you lose 10 to 20% of the potato, arguably the most nutritious part, and so you're creating food waste as well, okay? And when you add all these three things together, 
it really adds up to a high carbon footprint. You get a big warning sign, and this warning is also, hopefully, if the clicker works, going to be, be a warning to you of my next slide, which is the most amazing slide you're going to see tonight, or at least over the next minute. Is it going to work? Let's have a look. I'm going to move over here again. Here you go. It's the burger apocalypse, ladies and gents. Look, you're eating burgers, and then zombies appear. More burgers, more zombies, more burgers. Zombies, it's the burger apocalypse everyone, you've got to be careful. Alright, wasn't that amazing? <laughs> the perfect skills of me, wow, that is as far as it goes. Okay, we'll move on then, so we we're talking about the ABC of low carbon eating, aren't we? Hopefully everyone will learn something over the next uh, 15 minutes. So, firstly, the A, avoid wasting food. Why should we avoid wasting food? Tell us, tell us why. Oh, here you go. I'll, I'll, I might tell you why. I might, or I might not. Yes. A third of all the food we produce gets wasted at the moment. That's true in the UK and it's true globally. So over a billion tonnes of food every year is wasted. And if I could show you the other couple of stats I had, I would tell you that all of the land that that takes, which is about 28% I think of all agricultural land, very substantial, all of the water it takes, and all of the emissions um, that are caused through producing this food, which is then not eaten but thrown in a bin, is massive. Okay? So we're having a huge impact on the environment and then not even eating the food. So we can make some really simple changes there to reduce that. Okay, I'm going to move over again. Can you press it? Yeah, you There you go. That's it. So over a billion hectares of land, lots of water, lots of energy um, and emissions therefore all being wasted. Okay, and if people um, are aware of big numbers, that's quite a big number. A lot of money being wasted on that as well. Yes, thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is play a little activity to get you thinking about how could we avoid waste? <laughs> Fortunes now. For those of you that have not seen it on the TV, which hopefully is a minority, on this show we ask 100 people a question. <laughs> Thank you. So, to give you the chance to win a prize, I'm going to give you all the chance to be part of our Family Fortunes question tonight. You've all got some scrap paper and a pen, I believe. If anyone is struggling with that, move your hands around now and you will get some. I think you all do. Great. Okay, so one of my tough jobs um, working in the university and doing a lot of public engagement like we are tonight is I have to go to places like Glastonbury and Bestival to tell people about science. It's hard. Someone's got to do it, right? I bear that mantle. So a couple of years ago at Bestival, I went up and down the field for, for about half an hour, arguably, doing some work. And I asked a hundred Bestival goers about their opinions on some um, sustainability questions. And so I'm going to use that in the quiz tonight. So the first question that I asked 100 Bestival goers was if they believe that human-caused climate change is real. So your question, like... Um, a little bit on family fortunes is how many of them said yes? How many of those 100 people do you think agreed with the statement that human caused climate change is real? So everyone make your own vote. Whoever is closest to the correct answer is getting closer to winning a prize. Okay, last couple of seconds to mull it over. Okay, everyone has written a number down. I should have said, try and write it quite big so I can see what you're all writing. <laughs> On the count of three, I want you to hold your number up so I can possibly see it. One, two, three. Okay, I can see these ones. I'm not really pessimistic. For those at the back, I will need you to just be honest or you know, your neighbors will help, I'm sure. Okay, if your answer is above 80, then 
you're still in. If it's not above 80, you can put your papers down. How many have we got? Keep them up in the air so I can see. We've still got... 80. No, it's got to be above 80, sorry. <laughs> so we've still got quite a few in. If it is, if your answer is above 83, keep your answers up, otherwise down. Okay, if it's, if it's, okay, let's go all the way to 90. Who's got 90 or higher? Is that literally just one person? We can't play Family Fortunes with one person. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring back in 89. Who's got 89? Who's got 88? Who's got 87? Put your hands up in the air again if you've got 87 or higher, 86 or higher, 85 or higher. Okay, that's too many. So 86 or higher leaves just two people. Okay, if you two would like to come close, closer, come up to the stage. Come, in, come on, come in. be brave, be brave. Okay, you are going to get asked a question. Um, on Family Fortunes, okay, and we have actually done this to collect the data, we gave, we asked 100 people, what is something you can do to avoid wasting food? So start thinking of your answers. Whoever gets the higher answer wins the prize. And I don't really know how to say who goes first, because we don't have the buzzer thingy here tonight. So whoever can think of an answer they think is plausible, go for it. Got to, I'm not sure which is there. Anyone? I will go and make another meal with it and make something different with it. Okay, so maybe is that called use the leftovers? Yeah, make soup yeah. or something with So use the leftovers in another meal so it doesn't go to waste. That is a good answer. It is our second highest answer. Ooh. So well done. But you have a chance to steal. Can you get the top answer? Probably not. Eat less. Do you want to embellish on that at all? Eat less. I can't quite take that as it is. Any, any more? Eat less foods? <laughs> <laughs> One person said that. Um, I'm not going to take it, unfortunately. So that means you're going to win. Um, eat less is a funny one, isn't it? Because a, a lot of people do say to me when I ask them this question, eat less. But in our 100 poll people, um, the, the top answer was actually um, buy less. Yay. Okay, so plan your meals and therefore you will only buy the things you need for the meals you've planned and therefore it won't be wasted. Just eating less generally is a little bit too vague, I think, unfortunately. So well done anyway. Um, so you get to choose which prize you'd like. Do you want the t-shirt? You can go back to the t-shirt. Do you want the t-shirt? Do you want the pint glass or do you want the book? Depends what size the t-shirt is. Medium or large? Uh, I love the book. The book. <laughs> this is obviously the right choice anyway. This has got awesome facts. It's very readable. It's a great book. By the way, it's only about six or seven quid on Amazon if anyone else wants a copy. Well done. Okay, moving on with the show then. Thank you. <laughs> there are the answers uh, that I just talked about. Uh, moving on again. Okay, I'll go back. Sorry. You wanted to see those. So yeah, it was plan the meals, use leftovers, preserve or freeze items, 10 people said. Buy things locally or fresh or more often. Only cook what you'll eat or in a restaurant only order what you'll eat. And then finally, expiry dates, a really funny one. About half the people say pay attention to them. Things like rotate the contents of your cupboard so that the things going off sooner are near the front or your fridge. But then half the people say ignore the expiry dates. Obviously, because we've got our senses, haven't we? You can see if the food is still fine to eat, don't just throw it away because it says so on the packet. So be sensible about it. So either way with expiry dates. So there's our top answers for that. Okay, you've all learned a little bit about avoiding food waste now. We'll move on this time, please, thank you. <laughs> okay, to our B of ABC of our low carbon eating is buy in season food. And the reason why is I'm just going to put this down now. <laughs> and again. And two more times. Okay. The reason why is the carbon footprint of a lot of food, especially fruits and vegetables, can be more than 10 times higher if they're not in season. Okay. But it's quite difficult to know, isn't it, what's in season these days. In the supermarket, you can buy a lot of fruits and vegetables all year round. We don't really know what's in season anymore. Um, so, we're going to do a little activity to teach you what's in season when. This is called um, Good Julius, and before we go on to it, 
You'll see why it's called that in a second. We're going to ask another question, so you need your scrap paper again. And we're going to ask you another question to see who comes up for this chance to win a prize. Okay. We told 100 people at Bestable that beef protein generates between two and a half and ten times more greenhouse gas emissions than protein from pork, chicken or plants or vegetarian options. Given this, I will try to reduce how often I eat beef, or I have already because of that. How many of those Bestable goers agreed with the statement that because beef protein generates between two and a half and ten times more greenhouse gas emissions than pork, chicken or plant protein, they will try to reduce how often they eat beef. How many of those people said they would agree with that statement? So again, write a number between zero and a hundred, and you'll see who's closest. Okay, we compressing the timeline tonight, so I'm going to rush you last couple of seconds, and let's see all your answers in the air again, or, or not from this distance, as, it, as the case may be. Okay, quite a variety actually. I can see some really big differences in the numbers. I can see if you have got between. 45 and 70, keep your paper in the air, Ooh. otherwise you can put it down, okay? So we've got about 10 people still in. If you've got between 50 and 65, keep your paper up. Sorry, 66 was too far. Okay, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that literally six? One, two, three, four. Four, five, six. Yeah? Okay. We're going to have the six of you to come down. It's going to be crazy. Six of you, come to the front. We're now going to play some pointless for those of you who know. Okay, so we're going to have, those of you that know Pointless, it's like Family Fortunes but a little bit flipped. So for this one, again we ask 100 people the answers, but what you have to do as contestants on Pointless is get the lowest answer, the most obscure answer that is correct, and nobody else guessed, alright? So we're going to have three teams playing, so we've got two here, um, are, you, are you guys together in some way, do you know each other? No? So you two as a team, and then would you mind going over that side please? So you're a team, okay? So you're going to work as teammates, uh, like on Pointless, so I'm going to take an answer off each person, and I'm, we're going to try and do some mental maths and combine the answers and see who's got the lowest score, and you will win. The question is, if you could just move slightly out of the way of the... This is still not working Chris, you've been sacked. <laughs> okay, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many fruits, vegetables and salad items that are in season in the UK in July as possible. Okay, so you contestants stop thinking of answers, fruits, vegetables, salad items in season in the UK in July. Try not to go for the obvious ones, try and get the more obscure answer, the lower score is better. Okay, have a quick think about it. We'll take an answer off each person. And I might need some assistance with adding up the two numbers together. Or in season. Yes. Okay, so we will go team one, team two, team three, and we'll go left person and then right person. So you're going to go first, and then second, and then third. It's too late for me to say now, but you're not supposed to confer. Oh well, you're allowed to confer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all a bit crazy. Okay, no more comparing. Okay, we're going to take our first answer. Garlic. I'll give you another chance because garlic's not one of the things. It's got to be a fruit or a vegetable or a salad item, but not garlic. Be generous because we're in the pub next Tuesday night. So. 
Strawberries. Strawberries is a correct answer, but it's a very high scoring answer. Oh. I can tell you that 74 people said strawberries. Oh. Okay, so answer from team two. Mizuma. Oh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, it's rockets. I, I'm, I'm being generous with all the teams. I will take rocket because I don't know and it's not on the answer list what the first thing was. So we will have rocket. Rocket is quite a good answer. 15 people said it, so well done. <laughs> Team number three. Blackberries. Oh, blackberries. Mm. It's a bit early, isn't it, everyone? You can get them in July. I should have said to you all at the beginning, this is kind of national scale grown across the UK, not just in your own garden, uh, right in the south where it's nice and sunny. I'm a northerner. Um, I've got it, yeah, but I'll take that answer, but yeah. It's 100. Officially, they only, yeah, it's 100 points. Officially, they only um, come in the month after. Um, in August. So a lot of people say blackberries. Blackcurrants are in season, but blackberries, no. Sorry. I'm in trouble now. I? Okay, they are different things. So we've got 74, 15, 100. It's all still to play for. Our second answer? Raspberries. Raspberries is a correct answer. And 45 people said it. Can someone add up 74 and... 119. 45, 119, yeah. So you've got to get less than, well, if you get, you're on 15, aren't you? So you're going to be on the lower score, even if you get 100. But what's your answer? Radish. Radish is a correct answer, yeah. 21 people said radish. Oh. I think that determines who our winners are, because that's the six points. But just to, to finish, what is your answer going to be? Beetroots is a good answer as well, yes. Beetroots, only 15 people said beetroot. So, I'm sorry, I know they grow in some places, but that's, I'm only following what the data is on, on the, the national study. Second place, only 115 as opposed to 119 and 30. Sorry. You're on second place. Well done. You can have a beer, my friend. So, well done everyone, and out of you two, you got 15, and you scored... The total score is 36. 21. So the lower scorer wins the prize. Ah. And I've got, I have I should have, I should have runner-up prizes, I've only got beer mats. Oh. <laughs> oh, our, high, our lowest scorer is 15 points, so would you like the pint glass or the t-shirt? Medium-sized t-shirt. Pint glass. Pint glass, there we go. <laughs> Round of applause for all of our contestants. Okay, we're going to move swiftly on because uh, I'm almost out of time already. Wow. So our ABC of low carbon eating, we've done avoid wasting food, we've done buy in season. Um, I should also say that you're all winners really because on the seasonality of foods, I've developed my seasonality chart and I've got a copy for all of you to take away with you today. But moving on from that, we're going to think now about choosing the low carbon foods because again, like with seasonality, it's sometimes quite difficult to know what is high carbon food and what is low carbon food, right? So, to work it out, we're going to do a quick quiz. Before we do, if we press the button, um, two, one more. Yeah, so, huge amounts of greenhouse gases um, are associated with food production, 70% of all fresh water use, and three quarters of all deforestation is driven by clearing land to grow more food to feed our appetites, especially for things like cattle. Okay, so again, huge reasons why we can make quite simple changes but make quite big differences in this area. Okay, so we're going to do a quick activity on this one before I finish. This one is called, which has the higher carbon footprint? What we're going to do is, I'm going to pop up two different pictures of different foods on the slide. And this one is all play, so everyone's going to play. It's going to be absolutely chaos. What you're going to do is you're going to use your arms to say, if you think the answer on the left has got the higher carbon footprint, you will put your left arm up. And if you think the one on the right is, you'll put your right arm up, okay? And then we'll see 
I will see all of you who is right and who is wrong. Okay, and you're going to have to try and do this while still pressing the buttons as well. Okay, so the first one is beef or pork, which has the higher carbon footprint? Hands up in the air. <laughs> okay, so you think pork? Pretty much most people are saying beef. If you said pork, um, that's not right. If you said beef, which is 90 odd percent of you, you are right, well done. I've said it a few times, things like the burger apocalypse, uh, it's all about um, describing how beef and also lamb has a carbon footprint about three times higher than pork or chicken. Okay, So for those who do eat meat, even if you don't want to reduce how much meat you eat, simply switching to pork or chicken would cut two thirds off your carbon footprint. Because these animals create lots of methane and there's no avoiding that, whereas pork, pigs and chickens don't create methane in that way. All right, great. So you're all still in apart from those couple. Next slide. Apples or tomatoes, which is higher, have a think about it on the count of three. Put your arms up, one, two, three. Okay, we've got a little bit more mixed opinion in the audience now. For those that said apples, you're now out. It's not apples, it's tomatoes, okay? Apples grow naturally in the UK. Okay, we've got symmetry issues here. If you're still in, that's fine. Yeah, tomatoes, we put lots of water on them. Um, we use lots of fertilizer, which creates emissions. And a lot of the time we grow them indoors or we fly them in from other places um, to heat them up. So, bigger carbon footprint by far on tomatoes. Next items. In season strawberries, so that's between May and September, or ice cream. Which one is higher? Have a think about it. On the count of three, or, or before that. One, two, three, arms up. Okay, if you're still in, this requires a bit of integrity on your part. I don't know if you're still in or not, to be honest. Um, but you're all being honest people, aren't you? So, if you think in season, left arm, I think ice cream right arm. Okay, so you're saying you're saying left, left. Most people are saying right. It is actually ice cream is the higher. So people who said strawberries is wrong. When they're in season, strawberries are very nutritious, very tasty, and very low carbon things to eat. Okay. Ice cream comes from dairy, so the huge methane emissions from the cows uh, makes ice cream a bit of a higher carbon footprint.